Mark, thanks very much. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich is in Tampa, Florida, the site of last night's Tea Party Express CNN debate, and he joins us now to talk more about the campaign and last night's debate. Mr. Speaker, first of all, thanks for the time. Appreciate you having me back here on Bloomberg. Well, it's glad to be with you and always glad to be on Bloomberg. Let me ask you about last night's debate, first of all, the politics of it. Did it change the trajectory of your campaign and the campaign overall? Oh, I don't know. I think that uh, people are beginning to sort out who they think can solve the problems, as you've been reporting all day. Uh, we face enormous problems in Europe. Our own economy is a disaster. Uh, we had a 15 percent increase in the number of Americans in poverty just in the last year. So I think that there's a real desire by the American people to find somebody who has big enough solutions for the problems. And I think there's an advantage to being somebody who actually has, at the federal level, helped balance the budget for four years and helped bring unemployment down to 4.2 percent. So I suspect I'm gaining gradually, steadily. But uh, my goal is to be fully competitive by January when we pick the first delegates. And I think we're on track to do that. You talked about your job creation record, or at least what happened to jobs when you were Speaker of the House, and you raised some questions about some of the job creation claims of your competitors, some of those governors on stage with you, making the case that it's American business, uh, the economy that, that provides for jobs. It's the private sector, not the government that creates jobs. Yet at the same time, Mr. Speaker, you have criticized the president for the lack of jobs or the loss of jobs on his watch. Can you have it both ways? Well, as Ronald Reagan used to point out, government was the problem. Uh, the Obama policies have been job-killing policies. He's the most successful food stamp president in American history. And we have new numbers from the Census Department to prove that. Um, the fact is, at this stage in the Reagan recovery, there were 3,700,000 more Americans at work uh, than at exactly the same point in the Obama stagnation. If you go back to the peak year, uh, peak month rather, of Reagan's unemployment, which he inherited from Carter, and you go back and look at the peak month of Obama's unemployment, which he inherited from Bush, that's a perfectly fair thing to say. The, the Reagan program led people to create jobs, to go back to work, to have a better economy. Uh, the Obama stagnation has actually crippled. The, the combination of class warfare and bureaucratic socialism has crippled the economy. The result is literally, as of uh, last Friday, 3,700,000 more Americans would have been at work under Ronald Reagan than are currently at work under Barack Obama. Well, let me ask you about what he's trying to do even today in Columbus, Ohio, trying to sell people on his idea, his jobs plan, including his idea for payroll tax cuts, which a lot of Republicans have talked about in the past and support in the past. If you were in Congress today, just the tax cut component of his jobs plan, would you support it? I am against tax increases in the, in the middle of a depression. I, I think that we should uh, extend the tax cuts for working Americans, just as I would extend the Bush tax cuts. I, I would frankly go a step further. I'd go to zero capital gains. I would reduce the corporate tax to 12.5%. I'd go to 100% expensing for all new equipment to write it off in one year. And I would go to uh, permanent abolition of the death tax. I think we need to have a very pro-jobs, very pro-investment, and very pro-modernizing our manufacturing base kind of approach to taxes. I'd also repeal the Dodd-Frank bill, uh, and I would repeal Sarbanes-Oxley, both of which are job-killing uh, legislation. Let me ask you about corporate taxes in particular, because you were asked at one point last night about whether or not you would support ending uh, tax breaks for the oil and gas industry, which the, the White House says uh, would cost about $40 billion, provide another $40 billion in revenue over 10 years to the federal government. I wasn't sure if I heard a, a clear answer uh, to that question. If you were presented with that possibility, given the deficit situation right now, is it fair for oil and gas companies, given their profits right now, to benefit to the tune of about $40 billion in terms of uh, those tax breaks? If you replay exactly the question last night, I think I shocked Wolf Blitzer because after I got done asking about oil tax breaks, I said, oh, you must be referring to General Electric. I mean, think about what a great actor the president is. Ronald Reagan had made a living as an actor, but he wasn't nearly as good an actor as Barack Obama. There he is with the head of General Electric sitting in the audience, his lead advisor on the economy. 
And he's talking about tax breaks, but is he talking about the fact that General Electric is one of our biggest companies paid virtually no taxes? Oh, no. Because those tax breaks, by the way, are for green equipment that the president happens to favor. So I just found it totally ironic. I am not for raising taxes on American companies. I am for reducing taxes on American companies. I want American jobs in America. Raising taxes kills jobs. I am in favor of a lot more jobs, not fewer jobs. Your uh, fellow candidate, John Huntsman, has won some praise from the Wall Street Journal for his plan, which would eliminate all those tax breaks for, for corporations. You wouldn't go that far in your plan? No, I, I just disagree with the whole, the whole philosophy. I think that uh, this is a period when we should focus on the kind of tax breaks that would lead to dramatic increase in investing. If you had zero capital gains tax in the U.S., you'd draw hundreds of billions of dollars into the U.S. for investment for new jobs, new factories, new businesses. If you went to a 12.5% corporate tax rate, uh, first of all, a lot of the deductions would become less useful. <clears throat> People wouldn't use it. My guess is the General Electric would fire half their tax lawyers and simply write a check to the government at 12.5%. You'd also bring back home a large part of that trillion, $200 billion that's locked up overseas. We think $700 billion of it would come back home at a 12.5% tax rate. Finally, at 100% expensing, writing off all new equipment in one year, you'd very rapidly make the American worker the most productive, the most efficient, the most capable in the world. That would be an enormous advantage. Let me just ask you finally, Mr. Speaker, the last two debates have certainly portrayed this as a two-man race at this point, Mitt Romney and Rick Perry. Tell me why that analysis <clears throat> is off the mark. Well, it's convenient for the news media, but it's irrelevant for history. Uh, in 1971, George McGovern was only an asterisk. In 1975, Jimmy Carter was only an asterisk. In 1991, at this stage, uh, Bill Clinton was at the very bottom. In 2007, at this stage, John McCain wasn't in the top two. Uh, there's no reason to believe the elite media has the ability to dictate to the American people who the front runners are. Uh, they've, they've arbitrarily picked these two. They're fine people. Uh, they temporarily have good polling numbers, but a few months back, so did a bunch of other folks. And if you go back and look at this stage in 2007, you'd have said that Hillary Clinton would have been running against Rudy Giuliani. Neither of them got the nomination. So I'm very happy to focus on creating jobs, to focus on balancing the budget, to focus on the kind of things we need in national security. And I think over time that substance does matter. And I think I have a very good chance of starting in Iowa doing dramatically better uh, than the elite media would have you believe. All right. He's the former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, on the campaign trail in Florida. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Mark, Thank we'll you. send it back to you in New York.